Assalamu alaikum hayabati. Today we're talking about what med school is really like. So I'll be answering your assumptions uh, that you have on medical students and med school in general. If you haven't already followed me on Instagram, my at is um, Life of Omar B. Um, I've changed it like five times in the past two weeks, not gonna lie. But yeah, so make sure you follow me on Instagram. I promise, I have zero posts at the minute, but I promise I will post soon at some point in the near future. Um, but I will put, I'll ask for like um, video ideas or if I have questions or Q&As, it'll all be on my Instagram. So make sure to follow me there and you will have a chance to win a million pounds. So I asked my Instagram story and I said, um, what medical school slash medical student assumptions do you have? And I have a bunch of questions here, or assumptions, and I'm going to go through them and basically tell you, is it right? Is it wrong? I also have, so me, I, me, I have a, so I've done an undergrad in medical physiology, which is like biological sciences, and now I'm doing medicine. So I, I can compare it to other degrees because I've done other degree, another degree, so I can compare what it's like to be a medical student compared to a non-medical student. So, the first one, it's a very serious one. It says that the first assumption is that you get a bigger batty the more you study. I mean, technically, if you look at the anatomical structure when you sit down and you and you consider the g-force that is coming from the bilateral viewpoint and then you take into consideration the gravity whilst your anatomical position is sat bilaterally technically you're not wrong because you're squishing your body and therefore making it more aerodynamic and more recipient to the chair therefore giving the illusion of a larger anyway next one is, so this one came quite a lot and it was you have to study 24 7 you don't enjoy yourself or you have no social life or um, all you do is study it's a non-stop grind um, it depends you'll find students that are 24 7 study 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 that don't do anything else and they enjoy doing that so fair enough to them personally me um, if by 24 7 you mean like 24 minutes in seven days then yes okay so it's not that bad but like i do study sometimes but i get distracted or we mess about or basically this is my philosophy so right now i'm 21 years old so i'm around a quarter of the way through my life am i gonna spend all my life just looking into books and not enjoying myself when i don't have to no I'm going to enjoy myself, I'm going to do stuff I like, I'm going to make sure that I do enough work that I succeed and get high grades and brilliantly, but I'm not going to let this just take over my entire life. I will. I do want to continue to to have fun, to mess around, to work on my other hobbies, do stuff like YouTube, um, stuff like that. So it comes down to you, I know a lot of people, I know a lot of medics that don't study at all. Like, as in continuing their life is just blissful, no studying, it's a bit peak during exam times, but they're managing. I equally, I know students that study 15 hours a day, every single day. They don't, they don't have that many other hobbies or anything like that. So really it is down to the individual person. It's up to you. If you're like me, for example, you like to enjoy yourself, do fun stuff, live in the moment, carpe diem, then you can balance it. It's all about time management at the end of the day. Um, and so the next one is you have to be smart to do med you do have to be you do have to be smart by smart I mean not stupid you have to be see from day one I've always said that for example to get into Oxford and Cambridge you don't have to be a genius you just have to be you have to be incredible with your time management you have to be efficient you have to be productive but your IQ does not affect anything so you don't need to have an awfully high IQ to be able to do the things you want to do. Yes, there are some very difficult concepts that you have to be able to understand, but majority of us will be able to understand them if we put effort into understanding them. So if anything, it's 
generally people who get high grades they put more effort into their studies as opposed to they're just naturally more intelligent yes you might get more intelligent people but generally that's not it like I'll give you an example I have a friend who will not be named she is so she's doing medicine with me now and she got she doesn't pay tax she doesn't have a job she's never paid tax in her life um, she's never had an income not a job nothing like that she got a text message from a 07 number yeah that said you have a tax refund click this link and it was like www dot uh, claim your tax dot no slash gov slash something 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 and uh, she clicked on it she gave all her bank details all her personal information like her mother's maiden name and all that stuff um, and then she got started running around excited to get a 300 pound tax refund despite never paying tax in her life uh, little did she know that she just got scammed see what I did there did you see what I did there it's a scam so you get that and that I also have a medical uh, also a friend that's studying medicine and she cooks her noodles in the oven Do you know what I mean? Um, are they the smartest bunch? Some of them are. Most of them, no. They're just ordinary people. Yeah, so like, yes, you have to be smart. But again, with medicine, it's more about putting effort in. Um, you don't have to be a genius or anything like that. Certainly not all my, my friends are geniuses. Uh, another assumption is gross dead bodies. Do we see gross dead bodies? That's a very loose term. Um, dead bodies, yes, we do see dead bodies. So it depends per med school. So like when I did my undergrad in Leicester, they, they had a dissection room which full body cadavers. So the entire head to toe um, of dead bodies um, that you dissect, you get to see inside. And here in Lincoln, they have pro sections. So that you'll have, for example, from here to here, or just the limb or just the head or just the leg. Um, you do see that, some people do faint, some people don't, but it's important to study cadavers and prosections as a medical student because you need to see what it's like, like looking at it in a video or a textbook is great, but you need to be able to see it firsthand to feel it, um, because yes our anatomy is almost identical, but there are a lot of differences between different people's bodies, so being able to see a variety of different bodies like that. Like for example, you can't ask a live person, oh, can I see your arteries? I can't, can I see your heart? You can't do that because they will die, believe it or not. So it is important. You do see prosections or dissections in anatomy usually. I know some med schools now, because of the whole COVID situation, are doing their anatomy completely online, which means they don't get to see in-person stuff, but eventually they, they will at some point, um, and they'll probably have them all online. So the next assumption is, you're an immigrant. That's all it says. Uh, that assumption is actually incorrect. I was born in the United Kingdom. I am not an immigrant. I do have a passport. FBI, open up! Next one is full of weirdos. Depends what you define a weirdo as. I think the general definition of a weirdo is something that's different to us, um, or different to what we like and we do. So in that aspect, there are some people that you may consider weird. Weird, okay? I'm telling you right now, if you don't understand that, I'm telling you as a human being, it is weird. All in all though, I haven't met that many weirdos although it's hard because of the whole covid situation i haven't been able to meet like the entire class but is that there's probably are weirdos let's be honest in everything there's weirdos um there's weirdos in any course any job like that's very subjective next one is everyone is a sweat there's so there several ones for this one. So there's some everyone's a sweat. Most people are super competitive slash snobby. Some cad serious candidates only. And then this guy put. Then I met some medics and that assumption disappeared. Yeah, they had us the first half. I'm not gonna lie. They had us. There are sweats. As I said earlier, there are people that just study, 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 study. But as far as I found, the majority aren't like that at all. Um, 
you do find medics are quite generally like even the ones that mess about the most they do work quite a lot in comparison for example my undergrad where we did no work for the first two years as in we studied the day before the exam here you generally find people studying way sooner as soon as lectures are out so from my experience here so far the library and the study rooms usually have a lot of medical students in them uh, so medics do study um, but the ones I've found there is a balance a balance so it's not too many sweats but there's a balance between studying and messing about and we do mess about a lot the next one is you have irritable bowel disease um, firstly it's irritable bowel syndrome you uneducated swine you're not ashamed of yourself are you not embarrassed this is really embarrassing next one is medics are rich straight away as soon as you graduate absolutely not Absolutely not. Hell no, the no, no, no. When you graduate as a medical student, you do training, so foundation year, you earn 24k, and then the year after you earn like 30k, you are not rich straight away. You probably won't be rich for the next 5 to 10 years, um, excluding student loans and everything like that. So no, medics are not rich straight away. Absolutely not. In America, uh, even straight away they're not rich, but they do end up getting like hundreds like 300, 500k a year, that's in America, not in the UK, um, but you are, after a few years, you are above the average income uh, in the UK, so it is good still, but for five years, well eight years at uni for me, five years for the majority of people, you do expect something like that. Um, next one's also about money, it's <laughs> medics use only funds to fund their degree. I can neither confirm nor deny this assumption. I can neither confirm nor deny. I'm joking. Mum, if you are watching this, I do not have an OnlyFans. I promise you, I do not have an OnlyFans. Do not attack me or call me or anything like that. I am joking. This is for entertainment purposes only. I'm going to be dying today. You're not going to die. Yeah, I'm going to die. Next one, the course is mainly boys. No. That's actually stronger. It used to be, back in the day, it used to be majority of doctors. Now, you see the majority of consultants are um, men. Yeah, majority of surgeons are men now. But in 10 years time, when the recent people who've graduated become consultants, you, you're going to find a lot more balance. In my course, I think it's like 80% female, 20% male. Um, again, I'm not assuming genders. I'm just giving this as a general thought but no the course is my course personally is mainly females over uh, over males I found a lot of the males try to go into um, finance banking basically where the money's at and um, that's from especially like for example the Asian community or the Arab community they'd go towards that sort of stuff before it was they used to all be um, medicine medicine you do find a lot of like ethnics uh, doing medicine but uh, it is mainly females in my uni and in a lot of other unis as well and um, next one is you need high grades slash UCAT to get in yes and no you need good enough grades but you don't need the highest grades so my UCAT was 680 I know people I think the average was 650 I know some people with less than 650, like 610, 600 that got into medicine. So it's not just about, that's for their UCAT. I know my grades for, for A-levels were ACCD and C and EPQ, but obviously I did a degree. Um, if you do a degree, you need at least a 2-1, understandably, but that's 60%, so that is very manageable. A-levels, I know people with ABC that got into med, ABB, uh, AAB, uh, some did foundation, some went straight into first year. You don't need the highest grades, but the higher the grade, the more likely you get in. But always aim high. Aim for like A star, A star, A star. If you miss, you'll get A, A, A. Do you know what I mean? Don't aim for like A, B, C and hope to get in through that. So always set your uh, goals and dreams high and then enjoy the journey. But don't dwell and be upset if you don't hit it. But try your best. If you, get, if you give your best, then it'll work out. And if you're determined, you will get in. Like, had you asked me three years ago, Omar, oh you're going to do medicine, I wouldn't believe you. My A levels were ACCD plus CNEPQ. My even at uni, my in second year, my my grade was 52% average, 
I might as well just not go into uni. In third year, I patterned it and I got in, alhamdulillah. I still got four rejections. And then in clearing, I got two offers. I got rejected by one and then I sent them an email and then they gave me an offer. But it's the determination. It's the, it's the act of not giving up. Oh, if you want to do something, you always try to do that. You, you work so hard to do it because if you're consistent, you will get wherever you want to be. Like for example, now I'm sitting on 130 subscribers, I think. But I know in a couple of years time, I'm going to have over 100,000 subscribers. Like I'm saying that now because I'm going to be consistent with this and I'm going to be determined to make this successful, this channel successful. So I know for a fact this will happen. But you just need to be determined. But looking at myself now with 100 uh, subscribers, you're going to be like, you're going to hit 100 times that. Is the math right? Anyway, I don't know. Maybe, probably. So, see what I mean? Like, a lot of times it seems far fetched, but it is possible. And a few years back, I'm going to watch this video again. I'm going to look back and be like, oh, damn, I called it right. I said it right. Um, so that is the goal um, but that's with everything in life like if you want to do something you can I know so many people that have given up they wanted to do med or they wanted to do a master's in something or a degree in something or start a business or something like that and they fail and then they have to do it again and they fail and they start to lose hope and the moment you lose hope that's when you will never succeed in that field in that particular thing you're trying to do you want to always always try and work harder smarter more efficiently more productively to get to where you want to be because if you want to be something you will become that thing thing if you're determined to always set your expectations high as well like even if they're beyond reach you set them high beyond reach and then if you miss a little bit you're still very very high so that's my daily dose of um, inspiration for you thank you for coming to my ted talk appreciate it hey, this is the last one so everything is a memory test in medicine it is and it isn't so there's stuff like anatomy you just have to memorize that you just can't not memorize it um like learning different structures and different innovations and stuff like that you need to know that but a lot of it is understanding as well like like you, if you need to have a solid understanding of things especially like if there's like thousands of thousands of like drugs and pharmacologies and stuff like that there's no way you're going to learn them but understanding the basic process of them, their basic targets or their mechanisms of actions, that will help you. Um, and that's what you need to do more than learn individual drug names and all that stuff. You do need to know that for the, uh, for the main drugs, but you just physically can't do that for everything. So it is a balance. That's why medicals love Anki, which is like spaced repetition and uh, active recall, which Ali Abdul loves. So if you don't know who Ali Abdul is, he's a... Decently sized YouTuber, only 1.3 million subscribers I think he has. Is it a memory test? It is, sort of, but you do need to have a thorough understanding of things. And I believe that concludes this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I will catch you in the next one. Peace.